it's certainly a revolutionary change into the way that we look at disability services and that's certainly very, very exciting. The National Disability Insurance Scheme is about giving people with disabilities and their families an opportunity to look into their future and see what they want. And for us, our challenge as service providers is making those opportunities a reality. They're able to now make choices around what it is in their life that they want to be able to achieve. And it's, it's really nice to be able to sit with someone and say, in your life, what is it that you want to be able to do? What is it that you've always wanted to do and that you think you may not have been able to? One thing about the service is that it is very flexible. We have an amount of support, but how we use that support is very much up to us. In the past, we had to often fit in with what the provider was prepared to give you and what, what time the service has started. I think that it firstly offers more choice, secondly offers that person and the people who support them the ability to scrutinise the service that they receive and ensure that that service is suited to their needs. Brilliant is the way it always should have been. Even under block funding, clients or their families should have, should have had that choice. It's really, it's not fair the way it was. We knew it was going to be hopefully offering greater support, but we didn't hold out any great hopes, so we were cautious about it. Even when it was rolled out, there weren't answers for particular questions. I know that it's a, a, a scary time. There was a lot of, I don't know, rumours, a lot of talk within the industry, a lot of worry. So there's definitely some challenges with the NDIS and I think that we're really conscious of those. What we've tried to do is talk through those with staff and with clients. It comes down to being that we're in a trial site and that um, there's good days and there's bad days. In the end, everyone's looking for a, a positive outcome. Tell me your ideas. We're gonna get this wrong. We'll try something, we're gonna get it right. Then we'll, you know, then we'll keep evolving it, I think. Because I think people have this unrealistic picture that it's gonna be perfect the first time around. And it's just not, because it's a completely changed world. In relation to staff, we've really encouraged people to air their concerns about their job security or whether they were concerned about the clients and what they might get from their plans. At first it was quite hard because the plan is didn't, didn't want to speak to frontline staff or management. They seemed to be concerned that we were more about the dollar rather than the genuine care and support for our clients. Planners were, were unaware of the, of the support needs and the goals of the people who we provided support to. We have had a few challenges and issues. We're really looking forward to, to the planners getting more consistent, being equal and fair in the way that the funding's distributed to different clients. So we can start educating families before they get to that point and I think that's our responsibility. The planning process what was pretty easy. I told the planner this is what I think we need. Now that we're more involved, the clients are getting better outcomes because every, everyone is on the same page. Another challenge that we've identified from the NDIS is that it is more geared towards casual support workers and when providing behaviour support, consistency is vital. So it is a lot easier to implement strategies when a person is supported by the same four people every week. So one of the biggest challenges was moving away from a therapy model and towards a business model. So we needed to be able to provide our clients with information around what kind of hours it took to be able to achieve a goal for them. In essence, the NDIS is the marketisation of the disability sector. Sure, it may bring about more competition between organisations, but it will hopefully also increase the levels of care that people with disabilities receive. Having to look at ways of being a lot more creative and innovative in what we offer. You can't run a business unless you're pleasing the consumer and our consumers are our clients and their families and to run a successful business you keep them happy and they keep coming back and uh, we found that we've kept all our existing clients and have picked up some new ones. A really important part of the NDIS has been that I was really starting to be torn between the need to be a husband and the need to be a parent. And the NDIS has allowed me to not to have to make that choice. It's offered us not just more hours, but a greater variety of hours as well. We've moved from just respite care into skill development. Plus we were given some behaviour management time and also program management. One thing I've noticed is how far more independent Callum has become. He's now not only preparing meals, but he's doing washing, he's putting away his clothes, he's able to select clothing for the day. 
the change in him has been fantastic. His self-esteem has risen. It's not only given Callum more of a chance to, to be part of the community, it's given me that opportunity to do so again as well. I've really missed being able to do my job, but it's allowing me to re-enter the workforce. This scheme has been much more flexible and actually meets the family's needs. I asked our General Manager of Services, but what's the best thing that can come out of NDIS? And she said, the best thing is that our ageing clients, we can tell their parents that everything will be okay. I know that the role that I play for people with disability is such a big part of building their futures and being able to work towards greater outcomes for their lives. And it's really exciting for me to come to work every day.